people of the internet. Today I have a special review for you because it is the all new 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor. And being that I personally own a Bronco Black Diamond Edition two door with a manual transmission and the 2.3 EcoBoost four cylinder, I thought it'd be perfect to compare to see if this thing is actually worth almost double the price I paid for mine at just over $74,000. So today, I'm going to get this thing up in the air on the lift. We're going to nerd out on the tech specs, see how it's constructed, and then take it out in the desert and beat the shit out of it. <laughs> so let's go. Holy f***ing trophy truck. Hey, and good news. This will now tow 4,500 pounds, 1,000 more than my Bronco because of this crazy suspension. That's why it's limited. That is sick. It's got dual pipes coming out of the muffler and it's got that weird trumpet thing that the F-150 Raptor has. It kind of reminds me of the old school Apexi dual N1 exhaust. My OG JDM people know what's up with that. Out back, the Bronco Raptor has the Dana 50 M235 solid rear axle with the Performa Track e-locker and a 4.7 final drive ratio. It's still a five link with a pan hard bar, just like the other models of Bronco, but for the Raptor, it has upgraded Fox 3.1 internally bypassed coilovers. Look how fat this, the body of this is. I, I mean, it's got a boot over it, but it's still just as wide as the boot. The Bronco Raptor is completely covered in big, thick steel skid plates, as it should be, and it's only available in the long wheelbase four-door model, which is kind of sad, no two-door, but that means this thing weighs in at 5,733 pounds, which means this truck right here weighs 1,414 pounds more than my two-door black diamond Bronco. This one's got all kinds of bash hoops on the muffler. There's even one back here. Huh, the two-speed transfer case says FOMOCO stamped on it. I wonder if this is an in-house design, not like sourced out to Borg Warner or something. Anyway, at its maximum setting, it has a 67.88 to one crawl ratio. If you look just past C-3PO's elbow right here, you can see the plastic transmission pan above this mass, ow, that hurt, massive steel skid plate, which is the 10R60 10 speed automatic transmission. And that is the only transmission available for the Bronco Raptor. Up front, the Bronco Raptor gets an independent front suspension with aluminum lower control arms. But the knuckle is too. And the upper, uh, yep, upper is steel. And it does have that Haas 4.0 remote reservoir Fox suspension up front with 13 inches of travel. And if you look just above the skid plate in front of the transmission pan, here's your cross member and your anti-sway bar. That is your sway bar disconnect. And of course I measured them. They come in at, pro oh, look at that, perfect, 30 millimeters. Is it, oh, that's just a plastic cover to make it match. You could put this on, oh. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me but a tire. Ready? Woo, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a set of upgraded 350 millimeter front rotors with a two pot caliper up from 311 millimeter on the lower trim specs of Bronco. The wheels, they are a 17 by nine gloss black non beadlock wheel. However, the beadlock ones are available and they are wrapped in a set of 37 1250 BF Goodrich all-terrain TA tires. Out back, you have a 336 millimeter rear rotor up from 308 millimeter on the other Bronco models and a single pot caliper, the wheel and tire same size as you get up front. It is now time to give it the beans. First, a bolstering test. Good. I really like these seats a lot. These are a $2,400 option. 
but man, these seats are fire. They're so comfortable too. Even the rear ones are upgraded and those are nice as well. As far as drive modes go, I have a knob right here in the center that's painted orange to match the truck. Can turn that, normal, sport. Well, the headlights turn on and it goes fast. Tow haul, oh cute, it's got a little trailer. And slippery. Oh, automatically shifts in the four-wheel drive. The other modes are for off-road. I'll save that for later. I'm going to put it into sport. On the steering wheel, I have my steering settings. Raptor mode. You have your exhaust, your dampers. The R for Raptor. So I'm going to go to my exhaust. It goes from quiet, normal, sport, Baja. I'm going to keep it in Baja because I'm ignorant. Ready? Go. Get it. Sounds mean. The shifts in that 10-speed are great. They're real crisp and fast. That's good. I want to race this thing with my Bronco. <laughs> Pop. Well, it's fancy hood. What? The Raptor gets hood struts? What is this? I had to buy my own. What? Well, that's good. It's functional. I like how it says Ford Performance on there. Oh, there's a ground strap. Oh, there's all sorts of different underneath here. This this looks a lot different. You no, know, it's about to get serious when I have to put my hair up to look underneath the hood. Anyway, this 2022 Bronco Raptor has a unique engine that you can't get in any other model of the Bronco. It was stolen from the Explorer ST, basically. It is the three liter cast iron block aluminum head, direct injected turbocharged EcoBoost V6 that produces 418 horsepower at 5,750 RPM and 430 pound-feet of torque at 2,750 RPM. However, just because it's got Raptor badges on it and over 400 horse and torque, power to weight ratio is important. On the screen here, remember that 1,414 pound weight difference I said against the black diamond manual transmission with the four cylinder? Yeah. Digging in a little bit deeper on this three liter EcoBoost, it has a forge crank, forge connecting rods, cast pistons, an 85 by 86 millimeter bore in stroke with a 10 and a half to one compression ratio. The exhaust manifolds, they are cast into the heads, which is becoming super commonplace on modern direct inject turbocharged engines. But what's not super commonplace is having factory an anti-lag, which is stolen from the Ford GT race car. It's also on the Ranger Raptor, and I do believe the 3.5 liter in the F-150 Raptor. It is a throttle bypass based anti-lag system. You can see the little Garrett turbo there on the passenger side. There's another one on the driver's side. So uh, instead of a part number, there is a set of GPS coordinates on the top of the passenger side headlight, which go to none other than, of course, Dearborn, Michigan. That's clever. These vents are functional too. That's pretty sweet. We're gonna kick things off right away with a hill climb, except I'm not even messing with my normal hill. I'm going straight to the more advanced one. I'm going to put it into, let's see. As far as off-road modes go, I have normal, off-road, Baja, rock crawl. Oh, it turned the Bronco brown. I don't think it really needs rock crawl for this. It's been raining a lot, so it's not as dry out here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the one pedal drive. I really like that feature a lot. So it automatically locks my rear diff. I'm not gonna lock the front one. I really don't think it needs it. And uh, I'm gonna use my sway bar disconnect. There we go. There's a lot of articulation at the top, so get to try that feature out. All right, here it goes. Ruts got really big too. Ooh, that sway bar disconnects nice. That was so simple. Turned off my rear diff locker. All right, I'm gonna go back down, leaving it in one pedal drive mode. I'm gonna go down the normal hill climb. Oh, I got trail cams, don't I? Features. Whoa, Jesus! <laughs> There goes my water bottle. Oh, 
Ooh, the one pedal is really touchy. You gotta get used to that. That was, that was easy. One of the features that only the top trim specs of Bronco come with is the trail turn assist feature. And it's probably one of the coolest tricks that this thing has. If you guys wanna see more about the features that the Broncos are capable of, I did the Bronco off rodeo. There's a link to that video up above. <laughs> it's so crazy. It allows you to turn super, super sharp. Oh man, that is so fun. So I'm gonna switch it over into Baja mode. Now I get a camera. Oh, I'm dumb. There is cameras. Yeah. Oh, oh cool. It actually shows you the hood vents. That's crazy. There's all kinds of different cams. Love that. Well, shoot. <laughs> It's nice because it has little tire tracks on the screen, too. Send it. Ooh, there's all kinds of mud on the tires. <laughs> that scared me at first. I was like, what is that noise? Oh my god, the suspension is insane. Holy shit, this is so crazy. You can hear the burbles and pops coming out the back. Some of these bumps I'm hitting are fucking nuts. I wouldn't dare hit them at that speed and anything else. Holy shit. Oh, my puddle. Oh, going to the rally special stage. Move, lizard. The lizard trail. I know this is probably too much to put on one video, but you have no idea how fun this is. Like, oops, I turned on the windshield wipers and I have a GoPro mount to the windshield. <laughs> so to summarize this thing, everything that I appreciate about my little two-door black diamond edition, I appreciate on this thing as well. Uh, the fact that this is a four-door, is not really appealing to me because four doors are for people with lazy children. Uh, I will say though, the back seat has plenty of room in it and the storage compartment in the back has like double the storage room of the two door. This thing has luxury vehicle levels of tech on the inside, but the tech is all centered around being more capable off-road. So it's useful tech. The sound system in here is just the standard one and it, it sounds okay. It could be upgraded. I've still yet to use this camera mount right here on the dash. It's smart they put that there. See, it's little details like this that I appreciate. Just that piece of cordage being the factory color. Code orange accents and rubber doodads. I just realized the hardware is supposed to be the headlight. These are nice, but what I don't understand is why would you put carpet in a Raptor? Just give me rubber flooring, please. Real dry carbon fiber. Part of a package, though. Ah, the spare tire carrier is beefed up to handle the weight of this huge tire and wheel. Fuel economy in the Bronco Raptor is pretty abysmal, but then again, it has an active exhaust. So when you have one of those, fuel economy tends to go down because all you want to do is hear it make loud noises. To compare this against its rival from Jeep, I have not reviewed or even driven the new 392 Wrangler, so I can't tell you what that's like. I have driven a Rubicon with the two liter turbo four cylinder mild hybrid, as well as the diesel, and both of those I like. I really can't say one vehicle is better than the other. I think it's just preference, taste. Do you like the taste of horse or do you like the taste of... I don't know how to, I don't know what a Jeep tastes like. If you guys have never seen one of my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them on a one to five scale. One being the worst, shit show, abysmal, the least. Five being the best, perfect, the easiest. 
great. Starting with the bean score is assessment on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor is getting a rating of doo doo. <laughs> Whoever sent me this pointer finger, thank you. That's adorable. Next is the cookie score. It's assessment on what you get for what you spend. And this at just over 74 grand is getting a rating of doo doo. Next is the mechanic score. It's assessment on how much of an ass pain something would be to work on. Keep that in mind, one the worst, five the easiest. And this rig right here is getting a rating of doo doo. Next is the meatball score. It's an assessment of a truck's off-road capabilities. And the Bronco Raptor is getting a rating of 4.7 meatballs. This is probably one of the most capable off-road vehicles I've reviewed yet. This thing is nuts. I didn't even scratch the surface of its capabilities out here. Lastly is the Penguin score. It's an assessment based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the Bronco Raptor is getting a rating of doo doo. The only thing that I feel is a letdown is the fact that you can't get this in the two door configuration. I, I personally like the two door Bronco for many reasons over the four door. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.